Hi, George here, and this is how to use the Dodge, Burn, and Sponge tools inside of Photoshop Elements. I have this image available for download in my Photoshop Elements Photo Coach program, and I'll tell you more about that at the end of this video if you don't have that. And the first thing I'll be doing on this, because the Dodge, Burn, and Sponge tools actually work on the pixels in your image, is I'll make a duplicate of the background, right-click where it says background, choose duplicate layer, and choose OK. You can just hide the background. Now that's just a safety just in case. Now normally with a picture like this, I would come in and do an adjustment layer, maybe two adjustment layers. Look at that first, go up here to layer, come down to new adjustment layer, and I'll start off with levels, choose OK. And then I would increase the contrast by bringing up the blacks and bringing down the whites a bit in here and make it just a bit more contrast and maybe adjusting the lightness values in here. Just kind of tweaking these around a bit to get a more interesting image. There's before and here's after. You can see how much that has been improved just by doing that. I may also come in and increase my saturation a little bit. Same thing, layer, adjustment layer, this time hue saturation. And on the saturation slider control, bring that up. That increases the color in the image. Now the problem with this approach is that it works on the whole image. I could of course come in and let's say mask out just the subject and only adjust those settings. But even here, I have a white horse and a black shirt. I don't want to be doing both those adjustments with just these simple adjustments in here. So there are times when you want to be more specific with your adjustments. This is where the Dodge, Burn, and Sponge tools come in. Let's just hide these layers in there. We'll leave those alone. Come back down to our background copy. Let's see how these tools work. I'll zoom in a bit. There we go. Normally, this tool is on the Dodge tool right there. It looks kind of like a lollipop. And what the Dodge tool does is it removes exposure. So you come down here to the settings to see we have a few settings in here. You have shadows, midtones, and highlights. And we also have brushes in here. I recommend always using a soft edge brush when you're working with these tools. And of course you can adjust your size and the exposure. I normally recommend keeping the exposure very low on this. So you kind of creep up on your adjustments. But right now I'll put this clear to the top just to get a real fast adjustment in here. So I'll start off with the midtones, and this is normally the way you want to have this working. Again, midtones and a low exposure. Okay, with midtones, if I brush in here, you see how it's lightening up everything? And it's kind of across the board because we pretty much have just midtones in here. If I change this over to shadows and I brush on this side, notice that the dark areas are now lighter than they were in here. It's still lightening up everything, but it's doing more lightning on the dark area. If I go here to highlights into the right hand side, you see it's really lightening up everything a lot, going very hard here to the light side. And this is why I say to use a lower exposure. Let's just back up out of this. I'll use a control Z and back up a few steps. There we go. Bring the exposure down to say 15% and come back down to our layer. And this time if I come in and brush in, it doesn't go that real garish green right away. It just slowly lightens things up. And we're now seeing those highlights. There's the lighter areas lightening and it's leaving alone the shadow areas. So that's the basic concept behind using these. It allows you to have that kind of careful control. So let's say I wanted to lighten up this horse in here, but I didn't want to lighten the shirt. The horse is pretty much in highlights. So I'll leave that at highlights. And then I'll just carefully brush in here just a little bit over the horse and that lightens up the horse's part of this image without touching anything else. So it can be very, very specific and controllable about this. You may want to bring your brush size down. I'm using the left square bracket key here just to get the size down so it's a better fit. One of the nice things about these tools is because you can be very specific about this, you don't have things happening like losing your sky up here. The sky is a real problem. Let's just go back here just for a second. And I'll go back to the levels control. And if I wanted to lighten everything up like I did on the horse here, if I shore hide this layer, notice how I lose that sky as well. All the blue is gone from the sky. The horse is brighter, but the sky is really, really washed out. And again, that's why you want to come in and use these tools for being very, very specific. Now it will take longer. And of course you are working on individual sections in here. So you may want to go back and do a major adjustment and then minor adjustments using these just to kind of tweak things. See, I wanted to work on his shirt in here a little bit. I wanted to maybe see a bit more of the wrinkles in here, see more texture showing. In that case, I'll switch this over here to shadows. And again, the dodge tool is going to be lightening up your exposure. So I can come in here and just brush just a little bit with this tool. 
and show a little more of the highlight areas, kind of lightening up the dark parts of the image. If I want to darken them down instead, I switch over here to this tool, the burn tool. The burn tool darkens things down. It adds more exposure in and in essence increases your black point. Kind of like moving the left side slider here. This is similar to working with the burn tool and the right side here is similar to working with the dodge tool. So I want to have just more contrast. I would choose which side I'm working with, a light or a dark side. If I want to darken it down, I would use the burn tool. If I wanted to lighten it up, I would then come back and use the dodge tool. You also can use them even on the same area. Let's say I wanted to lighten up just the light areas, bring my brush size down, and I can then come in and just carefully hit those light areas like that, come back to the burn tool, bring my brush size down again, and darken down the dark areas. I can really increase the contrast difference in here between the light and the dark areas by being very, very specific with the tool that I'm using. Something else you notice in here, as you darken things, it tends to increase the saturation as well. And as you lighten, it tends to decrease the saturation. Let's say you wanted to adjust your saturation levels without increasing or decreasing your lightness values. That's what the sponge tool is all about. You have two options in here desaturate and saturate. Saturate means more color, desaturate means less color. You can actually use desaturate to create a black and white area in your picture if you wanted to, and saturate goes the opposite direction. Again, when you're using these things, bring the controls way down so you can bring them in just kind of slowly. I'll bring my brush size down a little bit here and do just a little bit of this, just a little bit more color in here like that. So pretty easy to come in and just add a bit more saturation in very specific areas. Let's say I wanted to add more saturation into my area back here. That's the sky and the trees. That's a good use for this tool. Let's come in, let's make sure we're on saturate. Pretty good brush size. And if I come in here now and brush in with this tool, I can increase the amount of color. Notice how the trees are getting more green back there. But I'm only adding in more coloration into areas that I want it in, I'm not adding coloration into my foreground writer. I'm not doing anything in here in the grass area. If I want to darken down the sky a little bit, I'll do the exact same thing. I'll go over here to the burn tool, bring my exposure very low, and I want a very large brush for this one. Let's go see how this looks. Here's a 250 brush. Notice how even with a very low setting, it still came in really fast. So let's just back up a couple of steps here. And I'll bring this way down to just 2%. And then I can come in and brush in just a little bit of that and darken the sky down a little bit. There's not much color up in there to work with. So I'm just getting the best I can. This is one of those areas I may want to go back in and use a different tool to increase the blue in this area. Possibly going over here and Use one of the smart brushes to make the sky blue or something along those lines. But that's the idea here behind using these three tools. And I would use all three together. It's when you want to adjust your values in your image and your color in your image, your color saturation, but only in specific areas, instead of using the overall image controls that we have with the standard hue saturation and levels controls. If you want the download of this picture I used here in this example, and if you also want to have this finished file over here, and a little step-by-step -step explaining how these things work. You can get all of that inside of my Photo Coach program. It's in the project section, which is at the bottom of the right side menu. If you don't have that program, you can get that over on my website, and I'll put a link for that in the description. Make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to click on subscribe if you haven't already done so. When you subscribe, hit that bell icon so you get notifications of my new videos, and I'll see you next time.